Hi there, Susan DeShanes, and today we're going to talk about body composition. So what is body composition? Body composition, and I'll just put BC for body composition, okay, it's made up of lean mass, LM, and it's made up of fat mass, okay? So what's lean mass and fat mass? Well, fat mass is adipose tissue, it's just fat, okay? The other lean mass is everything else, so it's your muscles, your bones, your ligaments, basically everything else in your body. So why do we care? what our body composition is, right? Well, it's important to know because if we have more fat mass in our body than lean mass, we're gonna be at risk of um, unhealthy cholesterol levels, uh, stroke, heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, certain types of cancer, gallbladder disease, quality of life. I mean, it just kind of keeps going on and on. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be a size two or anything like that, but what I'm saying is that if you are a male, you need to have your body composition to be 25% or lower. And if you're a woman, it's 39% or lower, okay? If your levels are over that, you're gonna be at risk of all of those um, different diseases that I mentioned. So that's why it's important to know what our body composition is. Um, I'm gonna give you a little visual here, okay? Pear, apple. If you have a body type and it is shaped more like a pear, which means if you carry your, your fat mass or your adipose tissue and it's more in your hips, um, in your bottom, you have more of a pear body type. If you have uh, more of an apple body type, so you're gonna carry more of your weight in your midsection, all right, um, you are at higher risk of different types of heart disease. And that's because that fat is around all of those organs. So it's kind of important to know your body type, okay? Um, we're, we're born that way for sure. If you are an apple body type and you have a circumference of your waist is 40 inches or, or more for a um, male, and if it's 35 inches or more for a female, then you're at risk once again for those um, different ailments that I mentioned earlier, the stroke and the high blood pressure and the cholesterol and heart disease and things like that. So that's another way of just kind of um, measuring um, where we want to be at. Now I had a student in my class and he called me Miss Ma'am, which I'm not gonna lie, I kind of liked a little bit. So I said, hey, Miss Ma'am, I'm not an apple and I'm not a pear, I'm more like a string bean. And I was like, what do you mean? So of course we called him string bean from then on. Um, and he was so low on his body fat that his body fat didn't even register on the bioelectrical impedance. And that is one of the ways I'm gonna talk about to test your body composition. So my point to that story with the string bean is that if your body fat is too high or your body fat is too low, it's dangerous. So for women, um, they would stop menstruating and that would, that would be a sign that their body fat is too low. And then that can lead to um, uh, problems with reproductive, um, issues in the future. For men, there's no sign. So it's really important that men know, um, you know, they might be too low and they can also have um, effects on the body. So um, yes, if your body fat is too high or too low, there's definitely can be some complications. Now with String Bean, my student, um, he wanted to get on the body composition machine that I'll show you here and it didn't register. And uh, throughout the quarter, he ended up having seizures and um, other medical issues, and I don't know if it was related or not, but um, once again, my point is, is that we need to have a healthy uh, body composition. So what are some ways to test your body composition? You go to the doctor's office and a real typical one is BMI. So basically they're just taking your fat mass, or excuse me, how much you weigh and how tall you are. And based on that, um, they're gonna say, you know, if you're in a healthy range. Well, what, where's the problem with that? Well, we've always heard muscle weighs more than fat. Well, if I have five pounds of muscle and five pounds of fat, they weigh the same. But what they mean by that is how much area it takes in the body. So here is five pounds, okay, of fat. We know that it takes for one pound of fat to burn, if you wanna get rid of one pound of fat, it takes roughly about 3,500 calories. So, if you, you know, were to get uh, a frappuccino, and let's say that's 500 calories, and you were to cut that out every single day for the week, you would lose potentially one pound of fat, okay? 
This is five pounds of muscle. So you can see the big difference between how much room in the body muscle takes versus fat. We also know that it takes a lot more calories to feed a muscle. So that's why your metabolism increases when you have more muscle mass, all right? So let's talk about uh, the different ways of measuring your uh, body composition or your body fat. So we talked about the BMI, okay, which isn't a, the best way because if somebody is really muscular, it's gonna say that they're obese um, because the scale doesn't know the difference between fat mass and lean mass, all right? Uh, the second way is the bioelectrical impedance. So the bioelectrical impedance, we have a machine like this at the college, okay? So basically, you stand on this scale, right? Your shoes and socks are off. You're gonna input some information into the computer and it's gonna spit out a little reading for you. So just like any test, you know, there's definitely a one to 3% error in this. So if I'm really dehydrated, um, it's gonna make my body, my body fat um, higher than it really is. If I am severely underweight or if I'm severely overweight, it will also skew the results. So there's definitely, uh, you know, pros and cons. But for us at the college, it works really well. Um, the students just have to take their shoes and socks off. They stand on it. They get a little re report and they get to, they get to move on. Um, another great thing about this is it also tells you your total body water. So I talked about dehydration. And if you're dehydrated, it can skew your results of your body fat with this type of testing. So with this one, uh, my total body water says I'm at 57%. So women should be about 50 to 60% and men should be 60 to 70%. And that's just based on your muscle has, um, holds a lot more water. It's basically all water, okay? Um, and so men tend to have more muscle mass because of testosterone. Um, and so their total body water is gonna be a little bit higher. So we talked about two ways already. The BMI is a, a way to test. There's also the bioelectrical impedance that I just showed you. Um, that's a way to test. The most accurate way is either underwater weighing where you're in a bathing suit. You basically are, it looks like a hot tub and they weigh you, okay? So fat is um, a very buoyant. Uh, it doesn't weigh a lot, so if a person is a little bit heavier, they won't weigh as much in the water. If a person is really dense, they're gonna end up um, sinking. So that's one technique that's one of the most accurate, um, very expensive and time consuming. Another way is called the bod pod, and that's a, it looks like you're in an egg and you're in your swimsuit again, and it's kind of an air displacement. So um, both of those machines are over $30,000. Uh, so we talked about the BMI, we talked about the bioelectrical impedance, we talked about the most accurate, which is the bod pod and or the underwater weighing. And then the last one is the calipers or the skin fold. And that's basically where you pull away the fat um, from the muscle. If a person has a good set of calipers and they know what they're doing, it can be just as accurate as the bioelectrical impedance. Uh, obviously if they don't know what they're doing or if, or if a person has really tight skin and it's hard to pull that fat away from uh, the muscle, you know, that can also be a problem too. So the highlights of this uh, very quick lecture um, is the importance of knowing what your body composition is. And um, I didn't go over the different percentages, like what's considered athletic or, you know, lean or, or things like that, because really, the only number I want you to think about is what's considered obese, which is 39% or higher for women or 25% or higher for men. Um, beyond that, if it's less than that, um, you know, you can be healthy and you can be fit really um, at any body fat percentage. So it doesn't really matter if you're a woman and you're 10% body fat or you're, you know, 25% body fat. If you're eating healthy and you're exercising, you know, you're, you're, you're on a great path uh, for health. So we want to know what our body composition to know if our you know heart is at risk for um, different uh, diseases. And then um, we talked about the importance of not being too low of body fat, not being too high of body fat. We also talked about the four different ways of measuring um, our body composition. And we talked about the uh, fruit analogies, the apple versus the pear and how if you have a pear body type, you have a lower risk of uh, heart disease just because of where you're carrying your 
um, adipose tissue or your fat. So uh, hopefully you got some information out of this video and uh, thanks for watching.